I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, newborn screening appropriations uh, and where we are within the FY23 cycle. Uh, and so I just want to, again, start off for a little background. Uh, there are two main ways to engage within appropriations. One is known as programmatic funding. Uh, one is known as report language. So, so programmatic funding uh, is a typically top line number. So a certain agency gets X amount of funding, uh, whereas report language uh, can help provide important guidance to inform and shape department and agency actions. Uh, while it's not typically uh, binding, uh, it does really, government agencies do typically follow this. Uh, and the reason I want to highlight this difference is because a lot of the language within new word screening appropriations is report language. Uh, next slide, please. And so a little bit of background on two of the main uh, newborn screening uh, federal programs. Uh, and so the newborn, within the CDC, there's something known as the Newborn Screening Quality Assurance Program. Uh, and this really works on the state lab side of newborn screening. And here they work with state labs to help perform quality testing to ensure the accuracy of newborn screening tests. Uh, for instance, if MPS2 has recently been added to the federal recommended panel, uh, state labs can now work with the CDC uh, quality assurance program to help to best understand how best to conduct that screening test to ensure the fact that when they add it to their state, they're conducting that screening uh, in the best possible fashion to ensure the fact that it is working uh, to the best of its ability. Uh, but often when talking about newborn screening, we can't forget that newborn screening is a full system and not just lab test itself. Uh, and so that's what brings us to the HRSA's uh, Herald Disorders Program. Uh, and this works with states to help expand the programs uh, through education. Uh, and so it's really working, they provide grants and other opportunities to states to really look at the new one screen, screen system as a whole. Where is it working? Where can we see improvement, uh, specifically within follow-up as well as education? Uh, and it's also important to note that HRSA supports the work of the Advisory Committee of Herald Disorders and Newborns and Children, which oversees the recommended uniform screening panel, the federal recommended panel that currently has 36 conditions that is uh, the guiding light for a lot of states on, on what conditions to add to their state panels. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, and so here was the Every Life Foundation's uh, FY23 request specifically for newborn screening. Uh, and we were part of this with a broad coalition. Uh, and so I wanna thank uh, many members of that coalition as well as a working group who, who helped bring together uh, these apps. Uh, and so you can see uh, there are four different ones. Uh, the first was around HRSA, the HRSA program to provide $29 million uh, in funding uh, for the Herald Disorders Program. Uh, the second was within the Newborn Security Quality Assurance Program. Uh, this would provide $44 million. Specifically within that, uh, it was a $15 million increase to aid in the implementation of all rust conditions by 2025. Uh, so this, again, would really help the CDC work with those state labs to really best understand how to add conditions to their own state panels. Uh, and then the last two were, was report language requests. Uh, first was just, again, highlighting our support for the Hunter Kelly Research Program. And last was the National Academy study. So Annie spoke briefly about that in her previous presentation. Uh, and what she highlighted is the fact that it is, the legislation has uh, been stalled out. Um, and so we want to find a way to try to ensure the fact that we can get this National Academy study uh, done. And so we were, we were requesting to have it included within report language. Uh, next slide, please. And so the current status, um, so the House passed uh, a minibus that contained six appropriation bills, uh, which includes agriculture, which oversees the FDA. Unfortunately, the requests uh, that I was talking about previously all are in that second aspect, which is the pass out of the remaining um, at the Appropriations Committee, including, including Labor HHS, but has not passed the full House. Now, this is a good sign. This is a good start. Uh, but obviously, we would love to see this continue moving forward. Uh, in addition, um, the Senate released their appropriations bills uh, this past July. Uh, and as uh, as we speak now, uh, there is expectation that Congress will pass a continuing resolution uh, by the end of the month, which is when the budget has to be passed by. Uh, and this continuing resolution will continue to fund the government uh, through, it's expected to early mid-December, uh, in which there, there is hope that they can pass an omnibus package, which will include, potentially include some of the language that we're about to walk through. Um, next slide, please. So in the House Labor HHS provisions, uh, there was, a fair amount of information. Uh, we did see uh, increased funding for both the HRSA and CDC program, as well as $1 million uh, in funding for the National Academy study. So we're really excited to see a lot of our priorities included. Uh, obviously, they weren't quite at the numbers that we had hoped for. Um, so just a, a $2 million increase uh, for the HRSA program, as well as a $3 million increase uh, for the CDC program. Uh, specifically within uh, 
person, I would like to highlight the fact that we did see differing language uh, between the House and Senate bill. So here you can see it talks about the need to improve and expand the new screening programs and to promote patient and provider education, as well as below, you can see some specific language uh, that can focus on how to aid in adding these conditions that have been added to the roster within the last six years. Uh, and you also saw similar language within that uh, in the CDC program. Uh, however, in the Senate bill, we weren't as uh, successful. And so next slide, please. Uh, and so you can see it's a little smaller. Um, and within the Senate bill, I'm going to start with the second bullet point first. The reason we only see uh, just the increase, uh, which was nice to see that the Senate bill didn't mirror the increase for the CDC, uh, but they did not include report language. They just included that kind of programmatic funding language increase. Um, and you can see here that we saw equal funding uh, in FY22 in the Senate bill to the HRSA program. And you can see here again how they, there are differences in the language uh, between the Senate version and the House version, where here it just states improve state's ability to provide newborn screening, newborn and child screening for her health disorders. And so it's definitely much more narrow uh, report language. Um, and it's important to note because uh, the appropriations process is still ongoing, as I said before, um, and advocacy is still a big part of this process. And we're hoping to see uh, the House bill provisions included in the final omnibus and really provide that increased funding to both the HRSA and CDC programs, as well as the National Academy study, because a big part within newborn screening is providing these additional funds uh, to help ensure that states can add conditions uh, to their panel as quickly as they would like. Uh, in addition, we, we know that there is a need to monitor the newborn screening, uh, and Dr. Brower will speak more about that momentarily. Uh, and that National Academy study really provides the opportunity to start to look at that uh, in a broader government level. So the National Academy study would really be a great way to look at the newborn screening system as a whole, not looking at just the follow-up and not looking at just the uh, state labs and not looking at what it takes to be added to the federal ROS, but looking at the full system as a whole, uh, and, and ways, challenges that occur within it and ways that we can improve it. And so that's where really where the appropriations process provides the opportunity to bring uh, the newborn screening system, to make improvements to the newborn screening system to ensure the fact that it remains one of the more successful public health programs. 